creating an 11 inch dial in CorelDRAW. Here you can see the dial that we will be doing in its finished state. Notice that each one of the gradients is 10 degrees away from each other. Also notice that the text is superimposed over top of the gradients so you can read them. In this tutorial we'll take a look at how to create a dial in CorelDRAW. This tutorial was based on a, on a file that a customer was having problems creating where he had an 11 inch dial and he had a he had to have um, lines generated every 10 degrees on this dial and at the end of each of these of these lines he had to have the degree marking so we'll take you through how to create this dial in CorelDRAW okay so let's create the dial just a housekeeping uh, or setup uh, that you need to do before we go ahead and create this file. Go to View and turn your dynamic guides on. We will need these for when we're, we're doing certain functions within this tutorial. Again, this dial has to be 11 by 11, so let's create an 11 by 11 inch page. So 11, press the tab button, 11, press enter. And I've got myself an 11 by 11 inch page. Shift F4 brings us up to page view. Now, first thing about this, this dial was there's actually two circles that have to be created. The first circle was the customer wanted a 3 inch hole in the middle of the dial. So I'm going to draw a rect uh, circle and I'm going to hold the control key down so I get a constrained movement to my circle. If you notice up on the stat on the property bar, you notice that the width is the same as the height. Again, I don't necessarily have to get it right on three inches. I just have to have a concentric. Let go of the mouse. Now what we can do is make sure our lock button is engaged and just type three inches and I've got a three inch circle. Now that circle has to go to the middle of the page. A couple different ways you can do this. The easiest thing to do is just to press the P command and the circles in the middle of the page. Again, you could also type in the coordinates here, which is five and a half and five and a half because two times five and a half is going to be 11. I do need to create another circle. And again, this circle is more for a, a visual layout. I'm going to create an 11 inch circle. So again, I'm going to select my ellipse tool and I'm going to drag down, holding the control key down. I'm going to make a concentric circle. It's going to be 11 inches by 11 inches press enter, press P, and I've got my, I've got an 11 inch circle and I've got my three inch circle. Now, I want to place a line exactly at the top or the zero or 360 mark of my dial. I'm going to select the freehand tool, which is located here in the toolbox, and I'm going to click once, let go of the mouse, and I'm going to drag down, holding the control key down as I drag down. Now, this line here has to be a certain length. Now, I can bring it over here and we can get it fairly close. So, let's see. The distance from here is 11 inches down to the here is 3 inches. So, our line has to be 4 inches. Now, we can take this line here and again four inches and we know that the center position is going to be 5.5 and my horizontal position is going to be 9 So let's just take a look to make sure that we're exactly where we're supposed to be. Again, notice I've got a good intersection right here on the circle. And I've got a good intersection on that circle. Now, I need this to go at 10 degrees on each increment. It doesn't really matter which way I go because I need to put my text lines in after. Now that we've got our first line 
created. We're now going to duplicate that line at 10 degree increments. The one thing to note on this 10 degree increment is that the rotation has to be from the center of the dial. Now we know our, the center of our page is at 5.5 by 5.5. So I need to rotate on that origin. And that's quite easy to do with the transformation docker. Just come over here and select the rotation command inside the transformation docker. Notice that right now my center is 5.5 by 9. Well, that's not what I want. I want 5.5 by 5.5 because that's the center location. Now, I'm going to do an increment at 10 degrees on the angle, and I'm going to do a copy. So let's go apply. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and just continue on all the way until we fill up our dial. There. Now I've got I got a line at, at 10 degrees along the circle at every 10 degree mark. So now the customer wants the actual degrees placed in the line here at, along here. Also, we should probably thicken these lines up a little bit. So let's select all these lines. And I don't want to thicken up this outer circle, but I'm going to use it in a second. So I'm going to go Control X, copy to the clipboard. I don't need this actual one in the bot in, inside here. I just use it as a visual layout. So again, that's gone. So let's select all these and let's make these a little bit wider because this job it was going to be raster engraved on steel using Thermar. So let's go into our outline pen tool here and let's use a little bit of a thicker line. Uh, let's do a little bit thicker than that just so that we can see what we're doing. And if I zoom in on there, there we go. make it a little bit thicker. There we go. So now we want degree marks all the way around here. So first of all, this one's going to be 0 and 360. So let's just use it at three, 0. So let's select 0. And again, notice how I'm actually with my dynamic guidelines, I'm actually snapping to my line. So again, just click on there. Make sure you're Justification is center, and then type in zero. And let's make it a little bit bigger here, half an inch. And let's zoom in. So there's my zero right on top of the line. Now notice here the problem is, is that the zero gets kind of washed out by the line. So what we need to do is we actually need to, to create another area underneath here that will block out this quadrant and we'll do that in a second but first of all let's duplicate the numbers all the way around probably the easiest thing to do is just to take that zero and let's duplicate it along here okay my zero set up exactly where I need it to be now I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the zero and I'm going to duplicate it around every 10 degrees and then what I'm going to do after I do that I'm going to replace the text in each one of the lines so Again, we're going to go to the rotation command, and again, we want to rotate this on the 5.5 inch center, so 5.5 by 5.5, and I'm going to increment this every 10 degrees, and I'm going to do one copy. So there's one, two, three, four, and again, we're just following along. And there we go, we're done. And again, you can see that each one of the circles is exactly in the middle of the other coordinate. So now, all I have to do is to select that text there, and then go, go easiest thing to do is just to go Control Shift T, and that one's going to be 350. 
and then the next one is going to be control shift T it's going to be 340 and so forth again all my numbers are set out and they're all indicated right here So now we've created the text all the way around the dial. Now one thing you can see here is that my text actually is probably a little bit too big because I've got numbers running into each number and it looks just like a continuous set of numbers, especially when we get over here in the left and we've got the three digits instead of just the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the text a little bit smaller. So easiest thing to do here is to actually, I've opened up the object manager, I'm going to expand out the layer. Notice that I've got the text on the same layer as my line so I'm going to put my text on a separate line just to clean up my document a little bit as far as its layout goes so I'm going to I've got the first I'm going to select the first set of text I'm going to go down to the bottom I'm going to hold the shift key down and notice I can get all the text with the shift I'm going to go control X that cuts out the text so there's no text now it's in the clipboard I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go new layer I'm going to call it text press enter this text now, this layer is now uh, um, active because the text uh, text uh, is actually red. I'm going to go Control V, which pastes the text I had into that layer. Now, what I can do is I can select all that text, and all I have to do is let's make it 0.3. And notice now I've got a little bit better spacing now between the numbers. Okay, let's just check something too. Notice that all my text is exactly still in the middle of the line and this is because I made sure my text was center justified when I created the, the dial. This is so important when you're creating text and you want to have the ability to have text stay within the same area and condense on the and move on the left and the right side of your line exactly the same. If I hadn't had this text center justified I would have been in major trouble if I wanted to resize the text. So now, all I have to do is create the white background so that the 2, the 3, and the 4 will stick out. This is quite easy to do in Corel. Again, Shift F4, let's go back out. Again, let's create another circle, concentric. I'm going to make it 11 by 11. I'm going to press P. Now that circle is right in the middle of my page and is right on the edges of my page. I'm just going to hold the shift key down, grab my right selection handle, and I'm going to bring down a little bit so that I'm sort of close to where I want the white box to start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again drag down holding the shift key down so that I've got a constrained movement and I'm going to press the right arrow button to duplicate while I'm holding the left mouse button down, hold the left mouse button down, press the right arrow, pr press the right button on your mouse, and you've got a duplicate of the circle. Now, I want to fill in this circle, these two circles, so that that line is white. Now, right now, if I grab this line, this circle, I can't make it white. Well, if I make it white, then what's going to happen is the whole area becomes white and I lose everything. That's not what I want to do. I only want this area from here down to here to be white. So the way I do that is I select this circle. Let's go back out. Select that circle. Hold the shift key down. Select the inside circle. I know those two are selected because as you know, can see here, I've got a couple of different nodes that are located here. Go to Arrange, Combine, and when I combine now, I only fill that part of the circle. Now, what I need to do is to take that curve, and I need to drag it. I need to, well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go Control-X. It's probably the easiest thing to do. And then I can come into the, into the first layer, or I can come here and then just go Control-V. And now that is pasted into the first layer and notice now 
I've actually, because this is on top of the other curves, I can now see the area. Now all I need to do is to select these and then right click on the palette over on my color palette over here and that will that will take the black color that's for my outline and make it none. And now notice that I've got my white area on my graduation so that now you can actually see the numbers that are there. Zoom back out and there we are. The dial now is complete.